And it's recording, so welcome to CBOR Interim. Uh, please note that this is an ITF meeting, so the ITF note well applies. Um, the agenda is in the etherpad. I can post it again in the chat. So the first item on the agenda was the date and time tag document. So we had an adoption call started two weeks ago and ends today. And um, following the feedback in the meeting and in the mailing list, we can say that the document has been adopted by the working group. So I will reach out to the authors and ask them to uh, submit as a working group document. So that was quick. Next. And last item on the agenda is the CBOR specification status. So, Carsten, how is it going? Oh, yeah, I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of echo. I think that's coming from Michael's phone line, but I don't know how to mute a phone. Ah, Michael knows. Thank you. Um, so, on, on the previous thing, um, there were some technical comments on the adoption call, so I would expect uh, Dashaw one would address those comments. I'm, I'm still at time tag. I'm not sure anybody is hearing me. Yes, we can hear you. I was just looking at the main list yep, to find the, find the... Nothing earth shattering. I, I just want to make sure that, that we don't lose that. Yeah, sure. But we can work on that uh, for after it's been adopted, like uh, submitted yeah. as the working group item. Okay, let me just mention in, in the minutes yeah, that do. there also were some technical comments. Thank you. So on the... Um, Ciba BIS document. Um, the uh, I'm confused by my. I have too many windows open. I'm sorry. Um, on the Ciba BIS document, there have been a few uh, comments, and th there are now uh, pull requests on all these uh, comments. Um, Trying to share that. Where is it? Sorry, I'm too clumsy today. Someone else share the CBOBIS repository and the issues. So I made you a presenter, so you should be able to share that then. Yeah, but I, I would have to have some window okay. open that has useful content, and I'm working on that. <laughs> I, I, can share. Share. I can share. Uh, screen. Let's see. I guess I will go with screen. Just let's make it simple. Let me know if you can see my screen. Not yet. No. No. Okay. Try again. Your entire screen share. Okay, it's not letting me. I'm on the web. I'm on the browser. Okay, let, let, let me try once more. I think I know a useful window. Yes. Just takes a while. So when you press share on Chrome, it takes about 20 seconds before it gives you a selection. Oh, there we are. Can you see uh, see my screen? Yes, we can oh, see it. Lovely. Okay, so we see that we have uh, three um, issues out there. None of them is, is actually uh, earth-shattering. Um, 
And uh, there are now three pull requests, one of which I made minutes ago. So um, you are excused if you haven't seen them yet. Um, and essentially, these all uh, have some very small snippets of uh, text. So on the 176, where somebody asked for reserving a tag number to indicate there is no tag in an implementation, uh, we seem to agree that 65.535 or 16 bit minus one uh, would be the, the right one to, to use here. And uh, uh, I think originally we thought that, that we might want to reserve the tag here, but I'm not sure that's a good idea. So um, I think we want to collect some more text that goes with that allocation. Um, so I just put in a note uh, pointing to the future here, uh, which says Ayan has allocated 65535 as a convenience for implementers uh, and so on, and we will uh, insert the reference to a draft. And this draft needs to be written. It's probably going to be very short until we start filling in the security considerations, which might, which might be a little bit longer than we anticipate at the moment. So I don't want the security considerations for this allocation to uh, hold up the CBOBIS document. Um, so uh, that's the text that I currently propose to go into the CBOBIS uh, uh, document. And that draft will be informational? That Reference. draft will be a tag allocation, will therefore be, be informational and may not ever actually make it to RFC, but might be replaced by something else. It's so, not an... Um, this is going to be an informative reference to an ID for now that's going to go in 7049 BIS. Yes. Um, and... We know that IANA has a, allocated that number, so that's not going to change. So I'm, we can, I'm, we can uh, allocate but, it right today. So, so we could have it allocated today. Okay. So why do we need another draft? Because it's nice to write up the security considerations. We could do it on a wiki page. But I'd rather I... reference a draft than, than a wiki page. I guess if you don't want to write another draft, then you would have to uh, explain here what this tag number stands for, and we don't want to do that. I'm, I'm just trying to think how is it really more than two paragraphs, and you think you're going to get into uh, security considerations? Um, molasses on this. And I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm just trying to imagine. The, the problem with a no-op tag is, of course, that that you can do uh, the, the thing that led to this wonderful Apple Zero Day um, that we all have been reading about a couple of weeks ago, uh, where, where you have two different implementations doing two different things on, on uh, an input uh, which might uh, lead to vulnerabilities. So we, we don't want to do that. So um, we probably should um, indicate that, that implementations that actually implement this should reject uh, encode data items that have this tag. So maybe we should actually call this tag um, uh, intentional rejection or something and make that semantics. Uh, any any Cbor with this tag in it should be instantly rejected. But we can, that's that would make all getting. existing implementations invalid. Uh, because they wouldn't reject it immediately, right? Uh, they would they would skip it and ignore it. Yeah, I'll present it to the, so, uh, to so, the application. So, so what is the correct behavior? The behavior is you're saying is that you you want you don't want them to skip it and ignore it. 
What would you, this draft say in its security considerations if you did receive it? But if you do anything where it's not good, if you have uh, different interpretations of, of the um, seaboard, you would reject an item with that thing in it. But you would not ignore it. You want it to be rejected. You don't want it to be ignored as other tag, other unknown tags are. Well, generally, I think since 2013, we have been moving away from saying that ignoring tags is a particularly great idea. Um, so I would never recommend ignoring anything. I would recommend presenting it to the application, but even the application shouldn't simply ignore the thing just because it's semantics is actually a no. So, but you don't want to specify ignore it because that makes implementations, sorry, you don't want to specify rejecting it uh, because that makes existing implementations not compliant. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, you don't want to specify this as intentionally ignore it because because you don't want to ignore tag, unknown tags going forward. Right. right. So all the next time we allocate a tag, which is not ignored, sorry, which we, we don't intend to, to have ignored, then every implementation becomes invalid. Well, 749 is changing the behavior for, for tags you don't know, which is, Ignore is not the right action. This document, 7049 bis. Well, let's say it, there is no one right answer to that question, but we are moving away from, from considering tags just uh, ignorable decoration and giving it a little bit more uh, standing. Uh, so I think th this should uh, this should should work with a slightly different perception of tags. Michael, I think you have muted yourself. Uh, well, yeah, I don't have anything to say back. I, I'm just thinking about this question uh, of. So it seems to me that uh, we need a transition from, as you just said, tags are ignorable decorations to um, if you don't know this tag, then you really should present it to the application for uh, further processing. Uh, but you want to do this in a way that existing implementations, which do just ignore them, are not invalid. That, that, would that summarize the, the, your the quandary? Yes. Yeah. But this, this so is kind not... of need to draw a line in the sand and say that and say and say any tag allocated before May fifth, um, sixth, twenty twenty uh, can be uh, ignored with not with without consequence, and anything after that. Uh, must be presented to the application um, with consequence of potential rejection or something like this. That, that you know, not something we want to do. We don't want to invalidate existing implementations. Well, but every implementation out there uh, recognizes the tags that we've defined so far or doesn't, and therefore, if it doesn't, then it is intentionally ignoring them, and that's fine because the tags we intended them to be ignorable up to this point. But going forward, we still have the problem because we need to define new tags and we, we, they do the wrong thing. Yeah, but I'm not sure how I flag that helps for this. It seems like we need to make a recommendation and we need to make it, we, we need to suggest to libraries that are processing CBOR that they have to have some kind of a new flag 
where the application says, I intend to ignore or reject unknown tags. And if you don't specify that new API call, then you get uh, uh, 7049 behavior. So this is the 7049 bits behavior, and the application needs to opt into it. Yeah, it's a slightly different issue from, from the 176 here, which is just elevating a tag number. Well, okay, I, I take that point, but, but we're allocating a tag number with a, an implied behavior of, of, I think it's supposed to be an implied behavior, is supposed to be ignore. Oh, no, sorry, as uh, current is an error, as it says in 759. The intended behavior of seeing such a tag is to ca cause an error, which is different than what we have up to before. So the moment we write that line, we've invalidated all the 7049 parsers um, because they ignore un uh, unknown tags, right? Well, that, that's why it says may want to, uh, which is one of the RFC 6919 uh, words. Uh, because we are not mandating that. Oh, you are on the phone. You cannot see this. Ah, sorry. The the text says. Uh, I, actually, I I can see it. I I had to dial in because the the WebEx is doing stun errors, but um, I can I am shared on the rest of the the, the AV. Um, so yeah, nine fifty nine. Uh, and it's not uppercase May, but I guess you intend it to be, um, or you intend it to be in that other document. So. So that's what I'm suggesting is that maybe maybe in order to accommodate this this transition on tag uh, behavior, that we need to say say that the applications need to opt into this 7049 bis behavior, and that that is one such behaviors. Yeah, but that would be in a different place. It would not be here. I agree. It would be in a different place, but it needs to go in the document. Do you want me to write that as an issue? Yes. So basically, some something saying that it's strongly recommended, uh, and and explaining why it's not mandatory. Would that be okay? Not in, ignore our recognized tags. Yeah, I probably need some time to find the the places in the document that already are saying something uh, about this. So um, I can't really answer that uh, question uh, right now. Uh, but yes, I think it would be a good thing to to make this uh, slightly changed stance on on how to process. And tags uh, be more explicit. Sounds good. Okay, but for for this specific issue one seventy six, do we agree that this is a good way to handle that once this unwritten draft has been written? Yeah, we need the one submission of the draft as soon as possible to move this forward. Yes. Forward. Even if uh, you're not satisfied with the security considerations or whatever, um, once the reference is there, I'm sure that people will be able to find the most updated version. Okay, so that that was one seventy six, and and we are waiting for Michael to to submit this uh, new uh, issue. Uh, one seventy seven. Uh, this was just an observation that if you allocate um, a tag with a number that doesn't fit into thirty two bits, then you won't have much fun with implementations that limit limit themselves to thirty two bits. 
So um, I put in this paragraph into the IANA considerations. And we probably should test this paragraph with IANA and asking whether they are happy to have such a paragraph um, in there. Uh, but th this makes the point that uh, uh, if you ask for a tag number, number, ask for one that is representative in 32 bits if you want to interoperate with implementations that do not support 64 bit numbers. Okay. Um, and the third one, th that's really a small thing, um, but it's good that, that Peter brought this up. Um, so th 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 there are other mitigations uh, than using a secret key against uh, uh, getting a polynomial effort uh, from um, pathologic hash key usage, uh, which have been used by attackers in the past and, and typically have been mitigated in uh, hash table uh, implementations. Why is this thing not coloring the change? You make this color? I don't think you can. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Okay. So, really, the 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 new s stuff is this uh, simple addition, which I think should be acceptable. So that's it. And I wrote. That didn't work. We are not hearing you. I wrote. I wrote ticket one eighty two. I guess you. I'm muting and unmuting too fast. Probably, you know what? I'm muting and unmuting in WebEx, but it's probably asynchronous to my phone call. So uh, you're, you're probably uh, muting myself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely do not agree with the suggestion because the suggestion, of course, is that, that parsers should do the right thing and not the wrong thing <laughs> by default. Uh, but we, we can uh, uh, hash this out uh, over the mailing list. Okay, um, for the other issues, I think you can wait a couple of days to see if uh, Peter or anybody else has comments, and then you can go ahead and merge the pull request if there is no comment. Right, the, the, normally uh, Paul looks at these and uh, merges them at some point. So this will take a couple of days or so. And I'll try to come up with a pull request on 182. Yeah, and, and post it to the mailing list so we make sure that everybody sees it. Then the plan is still to submit an update after all the pull requests are merged. And right. yes. Will will that be the next working group last call, or will we just consider the the first working group last call uh, be processed and and move it on? Um, I think I need to talk to Jim. But I don't think I'm seeing anything huge enough that would require a new working group last call. Yeah, me neither. So we were saying that we would just ship it. That was the, the plan. You will, of course. Yeah. 
you will of course need to look at the the final dash 14 but uh, yeah that, so that that's a temperature reading that's useful thank you okay so i think this item on the agenda is done yeah just a question um, uh, from last meetings we were still we were still reporting on implementers review yeah. I don't know if you and that has happened in the meanwhile. So we haven't got any new issues. Okay, good. I'm just checking if you had gotten any offline or not in the mailing list and not in the GitHub. That's good. And I, I might come back with some um, Shepherd questions. Yes. Karsten. Yeah. Okay. Any other business? Yes, I would like to point to an interesting discussion that uh, we're having on the core and netmod mailing lists about sets in uh, Yang Sibo. So if if uh, that is something you are interested in, please have a look over in NetMod or uh, Core. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, we, we are doing this uh, right. Let me try to find the link to the mail archive. That would be good. This is the mail mail archive link. Okay, Good. you beat me to it. <laughs> Great, thank you. I, I configured my mail reader to always show archived at headers, and I that, yeah, that's, that's a really good. good configuration you can do in your mail reader for the ITF. Okay. Um, should we also forward it to the Seabor mailing list, maybe? Make sure that people see it who are not in the call and don't read the minutes. The, the message was addressed to the core mailing list, the NetMod mailing list, and uh, call Yang Seabor. So, yeah, maybe that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other business? If not, we can close the meeting and we will talk again in two weeks. Thank you for calling in. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.